Let's go back to interpreting the scares. It's a special review. Just when you thought they were finished, they just keep reeling us back in. We've seen the end of the franchise several times at this point. First with Saw 3D, the final chapter. After that, we got Jigsaw, and then the ever-so-divisive Spiral from the Book of Saw. And I won't lie, as soon as I heard that they were making this, I went through a long list of conflicting emotions. I wondered how, I wondered why, I worried about its potential to be pointless at the end of the day, but I also held my chin up high. The Saw franchise is something that I consider to be my biggest guilty pleasure series of all time. I just can't get enough of it, and for Tobin Bell to make his return after being utterly vacant in Spiral, which makes a lot of sense, I was pumped. I didn't care if it even made a lick of sense. I wanted it like a dog wants a squirrel. In fact, I wanted it badly enough that I avoided watching a trailer because I knew, I knew a trailer would give away too much. But let's chat about Saw X. Saw X takes place between the events seen in the first and second film of the franchise. John Kramer is determined to find a solution to the brain cancer that is eating him alive. Having only a couple months left to live, he decides to venture into Mexico for a radical treatment that promises to heal him with a 90% success rate. But once he arrives there, he doesn't exactly agree with the business practices of his company, which makes him decide right then and there to play a game. Whether you love the series or hate it, I think that the question on most people's minds with this flick is, what did they do differently that makes this film stand out as something necessary? I'm not entirely sure the word necessary is the right term, and I'll get into that in a second. But I will say that the film stands out as one of the best Saw films because it dared to stray away from the structure of the rest of the series to do its own thing. That is, make John Kramer the main character. One of the smartest decisions of the entire film. Everybody agrees that Tobin Bell is a legend. Everybody knows that he plays this role better than anything else that he's ever done. So why hasn't he been at the forefront this entire time? Why was he always more voice than performance in the other films? Out of the entire saga, this is obviously his best work. However, removing the focus from the victims and putting more focus on Jigsaw also risked the film feeling less like, well, Saw. That's especially true for the first act of the film, which is often really slowly paced and, dare I say, boring. It's performed well enough, and it's insanely important for the rest of the film, but it does take a while to get to the point. But once it does, it's easily one of the best films of the franchise, bar none. You may also wonder about the traps. Are they any good? They are extremely good. Watching this in the theater, I was reminded why watching with a full theater is worth it when it comes down to Saw. People were gasping, looking away, even cheering when something happened that they loved. It was an entire event, which wouldn't have been possible without a great set of traps that this series is known for. There are also traps that are set up based around a common theme. I won't give away too much about that, but whenever you have a group of victims playing these twisted traps all centered around a specific theme, those are usually always the Saw films that succeed. Now, I did say that I would get back to the word necessary because this film is kind of pointless. I watched the series for so many different reasons, but one of the best parts was always how the end twist reveal somehow, somehow connected the events of the previous films and potentially future films together. It's always this big surprise and it makes the movie, no matter how good or bad they technically are, that much better. This does take place between the events of the first and second film, but trust me when I say it doesn't need to. It doesn't connect the films at all. If it doesn't exist, the rest of the story would go on as usual. You don't learn anything useful that the characters borrow in further sequels. It's a one-off film that's really fantastic on its own, but I could potentially see people forgetting about certain moments in this movie long term. Overall, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. It's a Saw movie that does what it sets out to do, and even though he's clearly a bit older than he was when the series began, Tobin Bell is a national treasure, and if for no other reason, watch the movie for him. I scored Saw X an A letter grade, final overall score of 90%, 90 out of 100 possible stars. You know, it has been a while since I've seen the rest of the saga, so I can't exactly say offhand where this is ranked with the others for me, but it has to be up there because it's solid. What about you guys? Have you seen Saw X? Are you a big fan of the franchise? Do you love it? Do you hate it? And if you do love it, where do you rank Saw X with the rest of the movies? Because a lot of them kind of blend in at the end of the day. Let me know, and as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with the next review. And until then, peace out.